Identifying the world's oldest country is an uncertain business. There's a mess of claim and counterclaim, myth and legend, archaeological finds and disputed evidence. One reason for the stickiness of this subject is the whole matter of deciding when a country becomes a country at all and how to measure a country's continuity after becoming one. Over thousands of years, borders have changed, territories conquered, governments, dynasties and monarchs have come and gone. All the same, it's hard to imagine that the country you're proud to be a part of didn't exist once upon a time. Some of the world's nations have stood the test of time, though factors such as boundaries and political structures have changed, which makes it almost impossible to pinpoint which country is the oldest. So, the long-running debate in academic circles, when does a country actually become a country? Is it the time when the first recorded civilization started, like the Sumerians in Iraq who ruled over Babylonia more than 6,000 years ago? Or is it the time when a country started to first take the shape and culture that we know and recognize today like China did by the end of the Warring States period in 221 BCE, or Japan did around the 3rd century CE? Or when they proclaimed their independence like the United States did in 1776. Is the United States therefore older than Egypt, which became independent in 1922? Or for example, when India first adopted their constitution in 1950? If this is the case, could you really say that Australia is older than India because they adopted their constitution in 1901? Obviously, this lack of clarity makes it really hard to say unanimously what the world's oldest nation really is. Over the years, many countries have been laying claims to be the oldest in the world. Some are still investigating and others have been advertising as the oldest in a bid to draw in tourists. While the designation for the oldest country on earth may not be decided yet, there are a handful of countries thought to be strong contenders. I have included my personal pick at the end, so you might want to stick around for that. Let's start with San Marino. By many accounts, the Republic of San Marino, one of the world's smallest countries, is also the world's oldest country. This tiny country that is completely landlocked by Italy was founded around 301 BCE. The founder of the country was escaping Croatia for his beliefs in Christianity and founded the Republic. However, the nation wasn't recognized as independent until CE 1631 by the Pope, who controlled much of central Italy politically at the time. San Marino's continued independence was made possible by its isolated position amid fortresses in high mountainous terrain. Its constitution was written in 1600 CE, also making it one of the oldest in the world. Moving on to the next country, Ethiopia. Going much further back than nations and countries, some of the oldest hominid fossils have been found in Ethiopia. The skeletal fragments belonging to Australopithecus afarensis are thought to be 3.4 million years old. The country has had various recorded monarchies since the second millennium BC and it's seemingly a common agreement that the country itself actually developed sometime around 980 BC. As life flourished in Ethiopia, complex societies began to develop and one of the first kingdoms established was Demet, which lasted from 980 BCE. After the fall of Dimt, the Aksumite kingdom rose to power around 100 AD and ended sometime in 940 AD. This kingdom was followed by the Zagwe dynasty and the Solomonic dynasty after that. Ethiopia uses the ancient Ge'ez script, which is one of the oldest alphabets still in use in the world. The country changed its name several times, at one point being referred to as Abyssinia. However, it managed to develop and preserve a kingdom based on its ancient form of Christianity. 
At one point, the whole continent of Africa went by the name Ethiopia. It is also the only African country to have never been colonized. While once occupied by the Italians for a short period in the 1930s, every single time they were attacked by external forces, they defeated their invaders. Moving on to Japan. Its claim seems to completely rest on legend that the country officially began to exist as a country on the day of February 11th, 660 BCE, under the rule of the first emperor Jimu, who founded the empire. However, it was not until at least the 8th century CE that Japanese culture and Buddhism spread across the four main islands. While this date hasn't actually been proven, there are Chinese texts that mention the existence of Japan in roughly 300 AD. Japan has laid claim to be one of the oldest countries in the history of the world, but the country began to develop cultural characteristics that we consider Japanese between 794 AD and 1185 AD. The country has passed through the hands of several dynasties and emperors, and it is still under the rule of Emperor Nahorito, who ascended to the role in 2019. The earliest emperors of Japan, following Emperor Jimu, are presumed to also be legendary, and there is no sufficient evidence that they actually existed. While historians can't be sure whether or not these early emperors really existed, they do know that people began arriving in Japan from the Asian mainland around 13,000 BCE. Over its long history, Japan has seen many different types of governments and leaders, but it wasn't until the Meiji Restoration of 1868 that modern-day Japan emerged. Next we have China. Starting along the Yellow River in northern China, Chinese civilization has outlasted virtually every other ancient civilization. Although the political structure of the modern-day People's Republic of China that began in 1949 is very different from Imperial China, the country has largely maintained the same borders, language and culture for the past 2,400 years. At the absolute earliest, China's mytho-historical Shia's dynasty, which is believed to be the first dynasty to rule in China, is claimed to have ruled nearly 4,000 years ago. The first confirmed rulers, the Shang dynasty, ruled in 1600 BC, but the most recognizable foundations of Chinese culture began in the late Zhu dynasty around 2000 years ago. This makes it not only one of the oldest countries in the world, but like Japan, it is also one of the oldest civilizations still in existence. Moving on, we have India. Rising from the Indus Valley Civilization, India began to take its current shape in 1500 BC at the start of the Vedic Civilization. This civilization laid the foundation of Hinduism as well as several cultural aspects of the Indian subcontinent that still exist today. The first kingdoms or Janapadas started to form on 1200 BCE and lasted until the end of the Vedic period. This led to the rise of Hinduism, Jainism and Buddhism in India and the beginning of the powerful dynasties that would rule India for the next three millennia. Modern day India was founded in 1947 after the country gained its independence from the British Empire. Another country that has a strong case is Egypt. Now, Egypt is a country that is world famous for its ancient history. When you think about Egypt, probably the first things that come to mind are the pyramids and the Sphinx. These were built as early as 2500 BCE, but Egypt's history goes back even further than that. The North African country has had a long and rich history before most countries even came into existence, with more than 3,000 years of history before the beginning of the Common Era. 
Although ancient Egyptian civilization can trace its roots back to around 6000 BCE, when various groups of people settled in the Nile Valley, Egypt became unified all the way back in 3100 BC, and in theory, this should make it one of the oldest countries in the world. However, the culture of ancient Egypt varies greatly from the Egypt we know today due to a number of different empires that conquered the territory, including the Persians, Nubians, and the Ottomans. Upon unification, Upper and Lower Egypt was ruled by King Menes. Menes is actually the Egyptian word for founder, and many historians believe the founder of Egypt was a ruler named Namer. King Namer was able to establish control over the entire navigable length of the Nile and established the capital in Memphis, a city near modern-day Cairo. This first dynasty was the first of a series of dynasties that would go on to rule over Egypt for the next three millennia until it was conquered by Alexander the Great in 332 BCE. The land continued to change hands and it officially came under the rule of the British Empire in 1882. It wasn't until 1922 that the Egyptians proclaimed their independence and became a sovereign state. So, even though Egypt is undeniably one of, if not the oldest country in the world, it was ruled by other civilizations for more than 2,000 years of its history. Finally, we have Iran, which was largely an undisputed shoe-in for the world's oldest country. Iran is home to one of the world's oldest continuous major civilizations, with historical urban settlements and cities dating back to 7000 BC. Throughout history, the borders of Iran have continuously expanded and then receded, and it was once the biggest empire in the world. The Achaemenid Empire or Achaemenid Persia, also referred to as the First Persian Empire from 550 to 330 BC, founded by Cyrus the Great, was the first true global superpower state and it ruled from the Balkans to North Africa and also Central Asia, spanning three continents from their seat of power in Persis. The Achaemenid Empire was the only civilization in all of history to connect over 40% of the global population, accounting for approximately 50 million of the world's 115 million people in around 480 BC. They were succeeded by the Seleucid, Parthian and Sasanian empires who successively governed Iran for almost 1,000 years and made Iran once again a leading power in the world. Persia's arch rival was the Roman Empire and its successor the Byzantine Empire. Iran has endured invasions too by the Macedonians, Arabs, Turks and the Mongols. Iran would go on to be ruled by several other dynasties with a major turning point in the 7th century CE and the Muslim conquest of Persia. However, the country has continually reasserted its national identity throughout the centuries and developed a distinct political and cultural identity. History can be an imprecise discipline ancient history perhaps even more so. Scholars have long debated over which country is the world's oldest, but the loss of archaeological evidence to time and destruction and the imprecise nature of dating ancient artifacts makes tracing a country to its founding challenging. However, my pick for the oldest country is between Egypt and Ethiopia. My reasoning is simple. Africa has a rich and complex history, but there is widespread ignorance for this heritage. It is a widely accepted fact that the history taught in schools today is the history of Europeans in Africa, not the history of Africa as an entity. Many people falsely assume that Africa was primitive before European colonial invasion. They believe the fallacy that it was a place of no cities, no empires, no commerce, and in other words, no civilization. 
However, this couldn't be farther from the truth. Africa has a phenomenal pre-colonial history that includes law, academia, and sophisticated societies, and since archaeological evidence points to life in Africa millions of years before anywhere else on Earth, I suggest we err on the side of this rationale. So Egypt and Ethiopia would be the most logical answers in my mind. I know critics to this position might argue that even though human life began to form millions of years ago in Africa, the earliest signs of human civilizations appeared fairly recently in the human timeline. The concept of the cradle of civilization has a focus where the inhabitants came to build cities, create writing systems, to experiment in techniques for making pottery, to domesticate animals, and to develop complex social structures involving class systems. Well, that would be a great point. But I would submit that up until the 18th century, Africans generally checked all these boxes, including running industries in well-defined trade routes, arts and crafts, commerce, and had forms of government well before migrating to other parts of the planet. Please feel free to disagree with this position in the comment section below if you do. I'd like to know your thoughts on this. Our desire to inspire a passion for learning about Africa runs deep. If you'd like to increase your understanding of Africa, start now by subscribing and you'll be on your way. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.